Hello, Rob, and welcome to the World Football Show. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. No worries, no worries at all. Now, your career is a fascinating one. Um, you've been to uh, many clubs indeed, and that's of interest in itself. But really, what really catches the eye is your international football career. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't actually um, join up with the Philippines national team until roughly 2009. But how did that come about? Did did you call them, or did they call you? Um, well, yeah, like you say, I was I was a pro over here for like twelve years, um, playing in various clubs. And my mum just used to. My mum was obviously Filipino. Um, my dad's English. Um, and my mum just used to pester me constantly throughout my career, saying you should, you know, get in touch with the Philippines and see if they've got a national team or, or you know, whatever. Let's see what the opportunities are there and. Just kind of, you know, just just said, yeah, mum, I'll do it. I'll do it one day. I'll do it one day. And then, you know, it's basically just to kind of shut her up, really. I just sent, uh, someone made contact with me on um, through Facebook, funnily enough, um, something to do with the FA over there. Um, I I just sent an email back showing showing show my CV, and then I didn't hear anything from them for like six months. Um, and I was I was still playing professionally with Grey's Athletic at the time in the conference. Um, and then out of the blue, I had a phone call um, from the president of the Philippine uh, Football Federation. And um, he said, we'd love you to have you come out and, um, you know, be part of what we're trying to build. Um, we've got a tournament coming up in like a couple of weeks. It's in the Maldives. Um, nice. Do you fancy coming along? <laughs> like, yeah, OK. <laughs> that sounds all right, really. So, yeah, so that was in 2009 and I've been, been part of the team ever since. Obviously, gone on, gone on to be um, a captain as well. I mean, what I'm inter- really interested in is the sense of a, the contrast between sort of playing at the level you are now and then playing international football. When do you feel that contrast the most? Where do you really see that and feel that? Um, it's, it's a bit weird, really, because you know, there's a big, big difference between the two. Um, but I kind of like it that way. It's um, basically I kind of grew disillusioned with professional football. Um, during my time at Greys and, and, and what have you, so another opportunity came up um, work-wise, which I wish I took, um, and then everything kind of fell into place with the Philippines. So I obviously needed to continue my fitness. Um, had a couple of uh, good friends that played down at Askey United. It was just, it was the team that I played at when I was when I was young, when I was a kid. Just kind of seemed nice to go back there and play without the pressure and go down there and play for fun and not play for for anything else you know it's nice to be able to just go out and be free and, and play for football not play for money anymore um, but then obviously yeah all the Philippine stuff came up and that was an opportunity that I was never going to turn down and it, to, to, when I first started with the national team back in 2009 it wasn't as, as crazy as it is now we had a bit of success in 2010 which um, kind of made football over there blow up a little bit um, and ever since then, it's it really is kind of come over here and come back into U- to the UK and just get on and be a dad, father of two, you mm-hmm. know, living in Oxfordshire, and then flying out every now and again to the Philippines where you know, you're playing in front of crowds of 50, 60, 70,000. It's, 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 wow. it's a bit crazy at times, but it's, it's been a hell of a journey and it's been a really good ride, a really good adventure. We're basically known as the Whipping Boys, really. Back to, you know, from when I first joined, it was teams like Singapore, and that would kind of play us. And it was, it would be a case of, oh, how many can we get against the Philippines um, to build up our goal difference, that kind of thing. And then, out of the blue, we we played in the Suzuki Cup 2009, managed to qualify by the skin of our teeth for the competition proper. Um, and then we just went on some, I don't know how it happened, it was just <laughs> some kind of fairy tale run where we. We beat the holders who, who were Vietnam at the time in, in um, the, the qualifiers were in Vietnam. We beat them on their own patch. Drew with Singapore, managed to get to the semi-finals. And then uh, it's literally from that moment, from when, from when we beat um, Vietnam back in 2009 to now, the, the, the change in football in the Philippines has just been, it's just been unbelievable. Um, there's a professional league out there now. Um, you know, there's there's guys from abroad going out there to play in that in their professional league um, with the highest ranks in Southeast Asia um, you know there's marketing um, or mark, people want to come and be part of the team 
Um, and yeah, there's a certain aspect of celebrity that goes along with it as well. So it's certainly a big change in the what, five or six years that I've been there. I've never interviewed a captain of an international team before, but uh, so I'd be fascinated, fascinated to know what what does it feel like to wrap on that armband. It's one thing doing it for a club team, but to be representing millions of people. I mean, what? How does that feel? And and pretend, and if you can tell us when your sort of highest or richest moment of pride was as as captain of the Philippines. Um, well, it's uh, it's just you can't really explain it. It's it's, it's a big enough deal. Walking out in front of, you know, we, we played Indonesia and we played in front of 90,000. I mean, so that's a big enough honour for, for, for any player. You know, there's, there's people playing in the league nowadays that never get that opportunity, so that was a big deal. But yeah, putting on the armband, it's, I've done it at a few clubs in the past um, over here in the UK, but it's nothing really, I, I can't really describe how it feels. I mean, I've only got. You know, if you can see it behind me, but I've got three shirts. Well, I've got two shirts. One's my debut for Wimbledon. One's a, a Filipino shirt for the Suzuki Cup 2009. And there's a picture of me leading the team out there. Um, they're the only three things I've got up in the half house of that football related, really. I don't really like to think about it too much, but they're the three things that mean most to me. And that picture there was me leading the team out um, for the first time in the Philippines in Manila. Um, so obviously all my, all my family were there. So that that was a, that was a pretty big deal for me. Um, it's kind of the, the drug as to why you want to keep going on and putting your body through it um, as you get older and older, really. So, you know, they're, they're, they're memories that, that are never going to leave me. And I like to put a few of them up on the wall every now and again to just remind me of what I used to be able to do. <laughs> no, it's always good to have that. Um, cool. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us, Rob. Hopefully we'll talk to you again in the future certainly we'd love to track the progress of the philippines on the trail to the world cup you're now our second team in terms of international football okay i don't know if that means a lot to you and the boys but there it is it's a fact thanks a lot rob thanks a lot thanks take care yes bye